ครับสวัสดีทุกท่านครับสวัสดีตอนบ่ายนะครับก็ผมเองวันนี้รับหน้าที่เป็นผู้ดำเนินการนะครับอยากเรียนเชิญเพื่อนๆของผมทั้ง3คนขึ้นมาบนเวทีก็ทั้ง3คนมาจากนอกประเทศไทยนะครับมาจากมาทั้งจากลาวมาจากเวียดนามแล้วมาจากกัมพูชานะครับ so let me let me um, invite first um, Miss Nana Kun Nana นะครับ uh, Miss Nana from from Laos yes so welcome on stage Kun Nana and then um, next up I'll I'm introducing Kun um, Mr Zung Mr Zung from Vietnam our friend from Vietnam. Mr. Zung is, is a community builder in Vietnam. And then um, finally, last but not least, um, Kun Mong Khon, Mr. Mong Khon from Cambodia. Yes. Right. All right, please have a seat. All right. So um, this session is about, is about Mekong Connect. So that is why we invite you all to, to Thailand, um, to Khon Gan, to Thailand. So let me pull up my list of questions. Okay, here. I think, um, I think it would be useful to start with an introduction. So I'll um, let you all introduce yourself for a few minutes, starting with Kun Nana. Sure. I think it's already on. Oh, okay. Sabai D. Um, good afternoon, everyone. So my name is Nana Supapon Suanavong. I am a founder and uh, managing director of Tolao Co-working Space. Well, basically, um, we are the first and now still the only one co-working space in Laos at the moment. We started um, our co-working space in March um, 2014. You know, the main goal is like to build up like startup community in Laos to see what's happening and see uh, what will be next. For startups in, in Laos. Yeah, okay. Thank you. So it's To Lao, right? To Lao. Which means. Um, to is a desk. Ah, so just, it's just the, it's same. the same meaning. To yes. Lao. Okay. All right. Cool. Mr. Zung. Thank you. I think you have your own uh, microphone, hello. maybe. On the other side. No? Hello, everyone. Um, Zung. Okay. One each, uh, one each. Yes. From Hanoi, Vietnam. And uh, when I started my business 15 years ago, I don't know what is entrepreneur, what is startup. We just need to do business to survive and to make money for ourselves. And I have been running six companies before I enter the, my current job as an, we call it ecosystem accelerator. So let's consider the entrepreneurial as an as market with the demand side are all the entrepreneur and startup. And on the supply side, we have all the mentor, Enzo investor, incubator, and accelerator. So our job is to build the capacity for the supply side. And I'm very lucky that I was involved in one Mekong region program. We call it Tiger at Mekong. That's why I met Nana and met Munko last year. We have a summit, a regional summit. And right now, we also have a program focused on in Vietnam to build all the ecosystem in, in Vietnam. Okay. Thank you. So you are ecosystem accelerator. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So you are accelerating both the demand side and also the supply side. Oh, right? we focus on the supply side. Supply side, which yeah. are the startups? Because uh, the startup and the entrepreneurs, that's so many, we cannot support all okay. of them. Okay, yeah. okay. So you are supporting the, um, the, the, the investors. Yes, right? yes. Okay, yeah. mainly the investors. Okay, thank you. So, Kun Mong Khon, what are you up to? Okay. Yeah. So, first, I would like to thank you very much for inviting me to join uh, this conference. And it's also glad to visit in Thailand and get to hear language, eat nice food. Uh, so, yeah, again, my name is Mongko, and I'm a co founder and CEO of CodingGate. CodingGate is a web and mobile development company, but we just not uh, that. We are just not an IT company. We actually position ourselves as the place to generate human resource in IT, in, uh, in web and mobile technology. So uh, currently, we got lucky to get an award as a Cambodia Smart Technology Award 2016. And the thing is that when we have opportunity to 
to, to do the work within technology, we always find a way how can we help the community to generate more business to new startup. As we know now, because of before, without technology, we have had to use a lot of capital to start in business. But for us, it's in the start, we just start off with you know, a very little amount of money, but we can uh, start, start a business. So we can more position from now on, it's simply like a tech ecosystem in our, our company itself. So we're running service to keep generating, but we're also developing people so that they can start in the business with uh, the technology. Mm. So how long have you, have you um, been doing your business? It, it already has been three years, okay. but we think that three years we have been involving more than 130 projects. 130 <laughs> projects? Yes, and now the team starts from 13, now we are 25 people. 25 people, yeah. all developers. Um, majority of the team are developers, okay. and in business size now we getting to seven people. Before it's like myself and <laughs> all the developers. Wow, so they are doing a good business in, in Cambodia. Nice, I, congrats. I would say the business is going okay, but the thing is that we do think that we're proud of. They do think that we love spending night, uh, morning to night time. So that's kind of what I feel more. Okay, nice. Cool, cool, cool. I think I, um, before we, we go to the next question, I want to get to know you guys a little bit more. Like for example, Kunana. You said you started Tho Lao in 2014, but what, what was your journey before that? Actually, my background is I'm a financialist, and um, I went to school in Australia and in the States, and I was working in corporate banking in the States, and then I came back to Laos, and I also, like, I was in corporate for a while. Um, then I realized that, okay, you know, there is something missing, in, um, in Laos, and one thing that really, um, that I, I feel like there's, that there's a need in change is the perception of people. I don't know, I think um, in Thailand, it used to be like that before. For example, when you are studying in college, like, you know, a lot of these people listening here, um, you may want to start a business. And then when you graduate, your parents say, oh, no, you know, it's too risky. Don't do it. Um, just go to work for the government and all the, the, those things. Um, I think personally, I, I come from that kind of background too, whereby my, my mother works for a um, state-owned bank and my, my dad works for a um, public hospital. He was a doctor. Um, then, you know, um, like business is something that that quite different for for our for our family but then i i just like it so um my background is finance and right now i'm still doing financial advisory business which i think is very important and um to a certain circumstances we still can support um the startups um well if you ask you know sort of like why you know we we why i started this it's just because I want to see whether this country, I mean Laos, has hope for startups or not. Um, I told myself, let's give it a try for a few years. If this, it doesn't work, it doesn't work, you know. But then let's try it out. And then over the past two years, we have been doing several things that, you know, I, I um, would, blah, I would, blah, blah. I would stop at that. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll come back to you with, sure. with the question about ecosystem oh, in, in we the do Laos. Have. Yeah. Yeah. So nice. So you, it's it's from it's from your your own motivation on that you wanted to do Tho Lao to prove something. Yes. Kind of to the country and also to the world, right? That's admirable. Thank you, Nana. Thank you. And and Kun Zung, I think you talked about the six businesses that you that you have done in the past fifteen years. Can you share us a few of of your businesses or one that you like in particular? Okay. So I. I first start with an IT company which I to develop ERP application for bank and big firm. And that's my first failure. We developed very good product, I believe, in my IT team. I, I'm not an IT guy, and so my IT team says it's a very good product. But we cannot sell it to anyone. So then we had to change our way to doing business. And thanks to doing the ERP, we understand quite good about how a business should be structured. 
So we start another company by providing business consultancies. And then back to the Vietnam economy at that time, we had a boom in stock market. So many, say, privately, uh, privately run family business, they grow up and they try to go IPO. So it's very good market for us to enter in, so we provide that kind of financial arrangement, a little bit like Nana. And uh, it's quite a good business, so we have some surplus, and we think about we need to invest on something. So we start to build a portal. I think it, it was the first portal about talking about doing business in Vietnam. And we build that. Nowadays, you see a lot of media, online newspapers, they have the comment function. But at that time in Vietnam, we are the first website allow people to make comment. So it is really exciting journey that we have cooperate with all the business media in Vietnam. We provide them the content, and we have a lot of information, and then we got some kind of like uh, big investment. Mm. Actually, it is big investment, commitment. We don't have money in our account yet, and it is another mistake, I have to say. So we have committed amount of investment, so we expand our business, and then you know the global financial crisis came in, so the money not arrived in our bank account, but we already expand our business to more city, high people, buy building. So we went bankrupt. Mm. So, but we keep continue our trying to do our job, and uh, at some point of time, you really didn't know what you should do. But uh, we continue. We have some kind of understand the market, so we try to spend our uh, a little bit like unemployment time on conduct a lot of research. But our research are limited, so we need to think about what kind of topic you want to spend our time on. So we select innovation and entrepreneurship. Mm. And so that's why we enter the entrepreneurial work. I see. So how, how did you come about um, entering the role that you are now, meaning the um, ecosystem accelerator? How did you... How did you came to the conclusion to decide to do it? Uh, I think it is like a fit. We do a lot of research. We public internationally, actually we work very hard on doing research. So when some foreign government, like US government and Swiss government, they're searching for people who understand the ecosystem, who has business experience, but also has some kind of, a little bit like academic background, so we are unique. So that's why they select us to first to join the Tiger at Mekong. And now we have a second program in uh, actually six countries around the world, but uh, I'm just involved in the Vietnamese section. Cool, cool, nice. Thank you, Zoom. So, um, Mong Khon, I think we talked a little bit last night that you are also, apart from just doing the, um, you know, the, the, the mobile development thing, you also have planning your own products, right? Can you share a little bit about your products? Um, so, uh, besides we doing the web and mobile development company, um, so starting from the year 2016, I just changed the way how we work in the company. We start, we in, by law, we working from Monday to Saturday morning, but we changed from Monday to Friday, we working full time and very intensive, but we, we spending on Saturday to giving our staff and our team freedom to thing and doing something different. So then I come up with an idea to run a program called Fast Track Software Development Program. Mm. So what it's do is that the whole team will not working on any client project. We just uh, step out from there, just working on the team ideas. Also from uh, one or two projects from my idea. Wow, nice. That's yeah. a bit like Google. Yeah. Like 20% yeah. project. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So by, by running that time, so the team actually brought up some ideas. So we have 20 people in, in that things, and then 22 ideas brought up on the whiteboard, and then there was only f uh, uh, five, uh, pr uh, five, uh, five ideas selected to be running for that, uh, that, that program. So the program running by every Saturday for six weeks, we have iteration. So first six weeks, we were presenting what uh, are the things that we get it. So we run it simply like startup weekend. I think you may hear a bit about that, but we focus only software development. We focus on technology. 
because it's simply like after people have idea, we just validate. Is it idea is social impact or make is edit, people would, would like to use it? Then but, but we it's decide. like all internal, right? From all internal people. Yeah, from... it's all internal people. Okay, yeah. cool. So running from there until now, we got in three, actually three really clear business idea. But there are two ideas which is so close to get invested, but invested or not is okay because we, we think that that idea, we have the people, the team itself, they love that idea, so they want to continue putting the full time into that. And myself now so is... So for a, those two ideas, you also seek external investment. Yeah, yeah. We, we also thinking for external investment for scale it up. Ah, the okay. reason is that we running... So this is, if someone interested in running IT company, you have to see... The, you have to prevent in two, uh, three, uh, two problems. It's an opportunity, but it's also a threat. So one thing is when you're running a service company and you was like, oh, that's a new innovation idea, maybe I should run that as a product. So when you're running the product, which means the company has to spend it, mm. right? So if you don't prepare well, the company will, will lose a lot of money. Mm. So if you want to do so, you make sure you have alloc allocating very properly and also the team itself. That's the reason we're running on Saturday because we want to see who are really committed. So the, the team I actually see. running, they're spending their spa time eight, like in the evening, Saturday, man, uh, like uh, Sunday by themselves to continue working on that project. Nice, nice. So what you see is that we can define that entrepreneur in them. Right. So, so for the future project, which is myself, I will be the person who promoting that, that idea. But for them, they will ex execute it. And then that for us to prevent him from myself to not to lose track mm. on to run, keep running the, the core company. Yeah. Right, right. right. Yeah. So it's like you have, you have your core company, but you are also doing kind of um, side projects on business ideas that are validated already. Yeah, like, yeah. And you are have, having true products coming out. Yeah. So right? we'll share a bit like why IT is also interesting and also what IT people should be looking for. So when we are running IT company, we have ability in two ways. No, one first thing we understanding what is the, actually the, the problem that uh, society facing or the business opportunity. But the second is that we have ability to make the technology possible. So the first idea we see that Cambodian have facing a big problem with healthcare. Because we so hard to find good hospital, good, uh, good medical uh, provider service, also doctor. So, so we're thinking about if you have a platform that allowing people to find all that information in one place, that would be great. The, big, the second big problem is that most of those uh, medical provider, the word medical provider, I mean is hospital, clinic, cabinet, pharmacy. So those places, they never track patient record. So you can imagine if you get ill and you have a, uh, you, you, uh, the patient, I, I will say doesn't know what the past treatment that we have done. So the problem is there. So then we want to integrate in some kind of sm small hospital management system to the medical provider. Right. So then nice. they can keep tracking the information. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Cool. And and the last one is simply we see that people are getting more busy, and we really focus about business, and then we forgot some time about family. So we want to create. We're creating the, the technology that actually can helping uh, family to be close together. Because we forgot in some time, like at the weekend, we busy with the work. We forgot that we should spending some time di eating dinner or going out some time with the family. So the, the, the application giving notify, hey, do you have any plan to go out with your family this weekend? So then so people- So it's like social network from family. Yeah, yeah. And, and then it's a notification will enable people to be more better uh, understand about to be better parents cool. and also the children will be reacting uh, positive to react to the parent as well. So that kind of technology we are very uh, happy to play around. <laughs> cool, cool. That's good because right now we have on stage uh, the um, co-working space, um, the community builder and also the startup itself. So um, moving on, I think we, we want to know a little bit about the startup ecosystem in each country because we know, we, I kind of know Thailand, I know, I know Bangkok, and now we, we hear about Khon Gan a lot. But I want to know what's happening in Laos, Vietnam, and also Cambodia. Good yeah, um, in Laos, actually, um, 
I think it's still in early stage compared to Thailand and compared to Vietnam. Um, we actually just did the ecosystem studies in Laos recently. Um, actually, it's, it's very early stage uh, because I think over the past two years, even though we have been, you know, doing a lot of activities related to, you know, um, to help um, people to want to do startups. So let's say I think that the core, um, the core problem is the um, the elements of the ecosystem components are not yet complete in Laos. Um, we only have a few players. Let's say we have, okay, we have co-working space, we have um, some startups, we have some government agency which is still looking after SMEs and, you know, they act as looking after startups as well. Um, we only have some very small media that would understand startup to help us. Uh, what else? Who else do we have? What, is there a specific media for startup in Laos? No, we don't. We have. should do one. Maybe uh, we are we are in the plan to do this uh, by the end of this year. Um, to we we also learn a lot from tech source in Thailand as well, and I think it's very powerful and I think it's very useful. Um, apart from the ecosystem, it's not complete. So what investors? What about investors? Okay, that that's the most important part. We don't have VC. We for the local angel investors, we just started to establish the local um, angel investor network this month. Ah. So that's very new. The problem why is late because after we built all these startups to understand and try to start something, because we cannot build angel investors until you have some products for them, right? right. Until you have something for them to look at. And then after we build all this, then we go to local businessmen and we say, okay, you know, we want to share with you on um, investment, you know, investing in startups. So that is why this thing just, uh, just happened very recently. And actually next week will be the first time ever that the local investors um, will meet with foreign angels mm. to learn from them, to exchange ideas. So let's see what's going on after next week. Okay. Um, if they understand better, then I think the next step will be there for the investment. Um, for foreign angel investors, there are some people, you know, who, are, who, who came in to look into opportunities. But again, as you, and as you might know, um, when foreigners, they come into Laos, if they don't have, you know, if you don't know, if they don't know the market, then they still, like, wait a bit to see. So that's, that's how it, it goes. So, um, by, so to, to conclude what I said earlier, um, for the startup itself, um, it's the beginning for them. There have been a lot of um, people who have tried different things. Um, now, um, the next component will go to the investment part and also, therefore, will link to the other factors like the government, um, public, and so on. I see, I see, nice. It's, it's just getting started. Like, what do you say? How, how would you estimate number of startups in Laos? Would it reach 50 startups, 100 startups, or 20 startups? Like, all right. Um, actually, there are a lot of ideas that have um, have been have have been you know seen through um, the five times of startup weekends that we have done, and also like you have done five times yes, startup weekends. Yes. Oh, nice. Yes. Um, you know, we also you know it's a good learning curve as well every time. But we got some good um, startups coming out from startup. Um, weekend in, in Vientiane. Um, well, it's really hard to estimate the numbers. I would say it's very small. If you say that, like, okay, how many people like start their, their ideas, I would say, you know, like maybe like 30, 40. Okay. Um, but of course, there are some, you know, people who are serious that I have seen personally. That's about maybe uh, 15 to 20 that are serious and they are working on that things. Understood. Thank you, Nana. 
I would say um, maybe, maybe, maybe we'll save Vietnam for the last. What about in, in Cambodia? How is the startup ecosystem growing? Um, so in Cambodia, things uh, startup, uh, start, uh, startup starting to be a little bit boost. People starting to understand this since uh, 2000, 2013, 2012. It's, is there a co-working space in Cambodia? Yes, yes. Now it's very popular. So uh, last, in 2013, oh no, 2011, so there was one startup first, which is my, uh, he also my, my, my business partner. He started the first one, which is Small World, where we based as well. So he started at the first one, people thinking, asking, is it an uh, NGO? Is it, uh, what is that? People just don't uh, understand about that concept. But uh, that kind of place, the time that allowing uh, people to come in and also do some creativity stuff and and still that time is talking about startup people not so sure but after a while to in 2013 they starting to have some event starting to have a uh, boosting about uh, you know starting uh, startup and then more business start so after I think after the 2013 when I start along at from there the gro the startup uh, is getting grow the number is also uh, increasing, and the thing is that uh, there are, I would say, I could not say the number, but what is the form of the startup at that time, like they are, made, they are uh, established, and they have a new startup, it's only idea, and then they, they run in a few months, and then they, they stop doing, or some of that, it actually, they run a side project along when they do, they, they work in the corporate or in the company, but it's, they still be not calling it a startup. They call it more like running project. But they're willing to some point, then time, so they can uh, jump in to start their business. And another one is that they are committing themselves, not the job fully, one hundred percent into the work, and that the word entrepreneur come along because they feeling they're taking risks, and it's also uh, they want to take the journey to the next level because some of them, you know, they don't mind of if they earn or not, but they want just try. To, 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 to make that happen. What about, what about investors? Are there a lot of investors in Cambodia? Um, Have there been investment, like fundraising? Okay, so I think for foreign investment or local investment, if you're looking for f f the, the thing that they're looking for, more established business. That it's simply the concept, all concept, simply I invest into business so that the business will generate, invest into the company who already generate money. For startup, not so, not so strong. Uh, but now it's new opening because there are many co-working space uh, happen, and this co-working co space the connecting between mentor, connecting to investor to meet with the business uh, startup. And another thing is this: they showing the sustainability of the the idea itself. That they not just like oh I want to do this, I don't not to do that. So they have a proper checklist. So the those people actually play a, a good role to help entrepreneur or start, uh, start up, start up to be more structured in terms like they have, for example, business plan, uh, business model, they need to have financial planning and they also need to be eval validating on a certain criteria, for example, check in the market. So this way, that making the investor, angel investor for another word, to invest into startup. And, and another one is to see the people actually more serious as well because they feel cool, they feel, like kind of be, uh, like making people say you are at least you are co-founder of some business mm. rather than you are uh, uh, yeah you 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 actually uh, be brave enough to taking start is also uh, a part of making people want to jump in to do the the business and the dedications and also the connection and also support so then the startup starting to rise and this year I see many good success startup. Uh, in, in, the, in, in Cambodia as well. Nice, nice. It's coming along well. Right, so Zung, tell us a little bit about the, the startup scene in Vietnam. Mm. So first thing about the Vietnamese entrepreneurial ecosystem is it's still very, very early. Is so, it? Really? Yes, it is. So many people just say that okay, Vietnam has a little bit advanced, a little bit lower than Thailand, but uh, higher than Cambodia, now. but I have my own experience sharing all the reasons. So I, I can tell you that for certainly every ecosystem has its own strong point. So Vietnam is still very early. I, 
I see Vietnam put the startup scene on the agenda of the country for two years, just two years. And, but one thing is we have quite a comprehensive player. When you arrive in Vietnam, you see all the players that an ecosystem one. We have cooking space, we have incubator, we have accelerator, we have angel investor, we see a lot. And also now we have the university and the government enter the game. Uh, but return to the fact that it's in very early, so people very receptive, open to every new thing. So we have a lot of kind of event, a lot of activities, and it makes a, a lot of noise. Even some people now so a little bit disappointed. That, so why those young guys make a lot of noise? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, I think it's okay. At the beginning, it's acceptable. And then people will do with more content. And another thing in the Vietnam ecosystem is there are a lot of players doing the same thing, but uh, we have very high com collaborative level. Okay. We don't see cooking space try to compete with cooking space. Actually, I think it is because the market size, I mean the number of startup and entrepreneur quite large. So it's, it's market huge, so it's not necessary to compete to each other. Uh, but it, the key word when we talk about building an ecosystem is patience. You really need patience. It, it's not about two or three years, it may be five or even ten years to see the impact. So right now all the players are work, but the problem, I don't think it's a problem, but it is a, bit a challenge. It is how to find out an effective and efficient scheme of collaboration. So some, somehow we are not we call it with isolated player. So we still need to do better communication and collaboration. So that's that, uh, the first thing. The second thing is in Vietnam we have an, what we call is an upside down ecosystem. Okay. So you see that at the, on the top we have very small number of startup champion. The startup that can, be, can receive investment and can scale up. So very limited number. But all the people in the supply side try to focus on that. Okay. Then when we work with a lot of the angel investor and also the VC, so they say that we have the money here, but we cannot find the startup who can receive our money. It's the same problem as in Thailand. Yep. Okay, of course, all the entrepreneurs will say that, oh, we go to a lot of the peace and we see a lot of bitches who never write the check. But the fact is, investor cannot find good enough uh, startup. And the last thing I would like to share with you guys is, okay, tech startup, I mean the IT and mobile application is some kind of like in the center of the ecosystem with a lot of things. But in Vietnam, we now have startup in more in that other industries, like in agriculture, uh, retails. retails. And some start with very, very traditional business. Okay. Yep. Nice. So, would you say that it's um, centered around Hanoi or Ho Chi Minh City, or, or what are the some cities of Vietnam that are that are happening? Like the cities? Is it happening in Hanoi or Ho Chi Minh or every every city? Uh, not every city. Uh, right. Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh City is. is uh, Which one is bigger? Make, make up, yeah. Which one is bigger, Hanoi mm. and Ho Chi Minh? Or? It's the same. Same, same size? Yeah, yeah same size, yeah. Mm. And in the center of Da Nang, it's now a rising city, about uh. startup scene, but uh, the number is limited. Oh, yeah. I see, I see. Cool. And in Cambodia, it's much happening in Phnom Penh, I suppose. Um, yeah, so there, there are two locations that are happening, very uh, not notable uh, grow is Phnom Penh and Siem Reap. And Siem Reap. Yeah. That's okay. the two, uh, like, city that... And uh, same, quite Samriab nice. is, is more about tourists. Yeah, yeah. Tourism, right? Okay, yeah. nice. Um, cool. So I think, I think I want to continue with Zoom on the size of the market because, like, each country has, has quite a different size. So not just the number of population, but also the, the, the culture and how people perceive the new product or new service. 
I see. Okay, of course, Vietnam we have big population and more than 100 million, right? Yeah, about 100. That. 100. Let's 100. say 100. Yeah. And uh, we have a lot of young people, and people, uh, I can say Vietnamese people, are early adopters. Uh, so early I think adopters. new thing like Pokemon Go, you can see a people, lot of people. People play Pokemon Go uh, in a lot. Vietnam. You go a to lot. Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh City and be careful on the streets. Yeah, okay. About Facebook, people use Facebook. Uh, of course. Of now, course. before dinner, you need to check in. Right. <laughs> but you don't have any local social network. Do you have? You mean local Vietnamese side? Yeah. Actually, we have some, but uh, people prefer go with Facebook. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, any local service that we should know about? Like, for example, in Thailand, there's pantip.com, there's sanuk.com, like local website. What are... Uh, for what purpose? For anything, for portal, for varieties, for news, for... For, for restaurant, you go foodie, right? Yes, I know foodie, <laughs> yes. Yeah, and uh, we have also kind like uh, Tiki. Tiki? Tiki.vn is like Amazon Vietnam. Ah, uh, like Amazon Vietnam. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, what's the most popular website in Vietnam? The most popular website? Facebook. Facebook, okay. Yep. How about local website? Uh, it's hard to say because hard we, to say. Got, we have several websites at the same thing, but uh, I think com e commerce website is uh. quite famous. Okay. It's actually among the young people because we all love to do all the things on the internet. Nice, nice. How about chat? Do you use Line or Facebook chat or WhatsApp? Uh, Vietnamese people is interesting. You can have Zalo, Line, WeChat, uh, Viber, WhatsApp. So it's quite fragmented. Yes. Because wow. it almost depends on your partners. You have partner in China, so you have you have you Zalo and WeChat. But you that's for business, your, right? How about for yeah. casual, for friends for, and for, families? For friend and family, that's the same. Because sometimes you know you have people, your friends study in Europe, so you use Viber. You have your friend in North America, so you use WhatsApp. We don't have some kind of thing that we just you only this thing. So no dominant chat app in Vietnam. No, there's a lot of like a ch a chat app, so you can also what is the most favorite one. Okay, that's yeah. interesting yeah. because that that's quite unique. Yeah. yeah, normally there's only one winner in chat. How about how about in Cambodia? Tell me a little bit about the market size and how the what what are people using on the daily basis? Um, so for daily basis, people for social media. Uh, dominantly Facebook. Facebook, again. And it's a start yes. with Instagram. People are starting to use Instagram. Instagram. Yeah, but uh, not to the level that business was considering. Twitter, about how about Twitter? Twitter, far, far away a bit. Far, far away. Yeah, okay. but only a group of people like politics and other will use. Uh, or a business who looking for uh, people who outside from the country. For example, myself. Our, some of the client is from US, from Europe, so then they're using Twitter, so I have to use Twitter for updating what we are doing. Okay. Uh, but mainly, Twitter is not so active. Okay. Uh, for the chat, uh, for business, definitely will vary, depend on the customer. Yes. For example, client from Singapore will be WhatsApp. The client from, like, from China. Yeah, but from, for local, I'm talking about local. So local for local, uh, Line, very popular. Before, uh, Viper. Viper. Viper is very popular. And another, which is Facebook also take a big market. Facebook they Messenger. chat through Facebook and call. So Facebook and Line has a big competition now that people starting to use. Mm. Yeah. I heard also that um, in Cambodia, people use one financial service that is quite popular. It's called Wing or something. Right. Okay, okay so um, as you know, in Cambodia, e-commerce is not... Why e-commerce in Cambodia not booming yet? Because we don't have online payment, which is uh, really, uh, really used yet, right? So people have Visa card, they can pay, but for collecting the money, that's still a challenge. So then they come in with the, the way to see uh, the, that uh, like online payment will happen is through mobile wallet. Mm -hmm. So Wing is the first one. Then they have true money from, uh, from Thailand as well. They also smart, uh, smart Louis, which is uh, uh, also online 
uh, online payment, but they're using credit. For, let's say I put the money into my phone credit or I have account, so I can pay to the So it's service. Swing, the most popular financial wallet uh, app in, in Cambodia. Can we say that? I think it's for now, yeah. yeah. For now. And true money, but true money is also it's starting, starting. Started in but still not truly, uh, I can say, it's closely to 100% of e uh, online payment, but still, uh, um, I think very, very close nice. to that. But the thing is that when we, have, we see the potential, we always find a way to make online payment work. So with, this, uh, with mobile wallet, and it's also coming uh, as well that uh, some company from outside, they wonder, you know, making uh, like kind of uh, the platform, mid, the middle platform to connect to the bank and also for the online. So that would be soon. So is, is Wing a startup or is Wing owned by a big no, corporate? Uh, Wing is, they, they are in the, uh, like, um, in one group of business, like Royal Group is like a big uh, corporation. Uh, and it's a corporate they service. have been a, established a number of years. Uh, and uh, the, the strength of that, uh, that company is simply they have so many agents all across the whole country. I see. So then before that, it's like traditional way. You go into the money agents, you transfer from one agent to another agent based on their, you know, cover for the whole country. Then they're just using the mobile uh, to transfer. They're using like GSM for before, nice. before. But this year, thing is moving forward, which is the, uh, like online payments. Nice, yeah. nice, nice. Cool. How about in Laos? Yeah, in Laos, I think uh, what, what Mong Kon said was very um, similar. Facebook, you know, is main one, and then Instagram to a certain um, group of people. Uh, we also use YouTube, YouTube quite a lot. Quite a lot. Um, for a local website or local community, we have this one called Tolakong. Tolakong. Wow, we, nice. Which is, um, Good they, name. Yeah, they started off with a Facebook page only. The problem in Laos is because, you know, um, the printed media is quite... Um, it's not very fast in terms of the speed. So Tolakong, it's a, you know, it's a group of people who love to hunt for hot news. Yeah, news. And they did post on Facebook first before they create their website. So it's very popular, especially when you hear the um, siren. You know, you would you would want to know what's happening. You yeah. know, is there a fire near somewhere? Yeah, normally news is one of the first things yes. that's happening in each city. Yes. yes, and then that is why, you know, people look up and they talk about it. Oh, there's a fire there, you know. So people get updated through Tolakong a lot and it becomes, oh. a, it becomes quite famous for people to go there and, right. you know, use it. Um, apart from that, what else? We talk about the communication apps. Um, I think it allows the most famous one is WhatsApp. WhatsApp. Mm. And the second one is Line. Mm. And then uh, WeChat. And then WeChat. Yes. Mm, nice, nice, nice. We see we see different in, in each country because mm -hmm. in Thailand predominantly line because WhatsApp it's just um, no one used much anymore and WeChat never made it and Viber never made it to Thailand too. So it's quite different. That's yeah. interesting. What about what what is number one website in Cambodia? Local website. So. Um, so in, in terms of e-commerce, I, as I mentioned, because of payment online is still a challenge. So there have some big players coming now. But the, the for one thing that we, we see the internet is a, is a way to get people come, uh, getting to know internet. We have also some uh, local news website. News website is very popular. A lot, a lot of people start thing is that they have the website posting information classify ad and also news is very popular. Right. What are some of the, the names of the first website? So for the website is uh, Fresh, uh, so Sabai. Sabai. So Sabai. Sabai News. That's Sabai, Sabai news. is a cop, uh, is, yeah, they have the corporations. Okay. And uh, they have a news media, a uh, news portal and people visit there very often. Uh -huh. Another one, they have Fresh New, which is uh, the same, which is mobile, mobile and also they have the web platform, also Facebook. And then uh, they got in very popular with, with that ones. It's simply they, they, they making people want to follow using notification, you know. It's like you got a new update, but sometimes it's getting to a little bit too much because mm. <laughs> there are many news uh, coming per day. So like you got a lot of notifications. Okay. And right. then it's, it's 
people following to get in more and more mobile application with the news as well. Cool, yeah. cool. I forgot to ask you, like out of those 130 projects that you have done in the past three years, are those within Cambodia or are those like from outside? Um, so 60% are in, local, uh, in Cambodia and another 40 which is from outside ah, of the country. So both. And we also have uh, uh, some, other, some other project is from expat, which is people living there. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the project we, we have as well. So uh, the thing is that we, if we have a chance to get into uh, like corporate or medium business, so then uh, it's possible to get in the business with what we're offering. But for like startup and also like in between or small and medium, it's a bit challenging because of, it's, as you know, that kind of service is a bit uh, expensive mm. because we need a really skillful people to do the job. Okay. So we cannot too low with that. So what's the size of population of Cambodia? So currently, we are, we, the population is around 16, uh, 16 million. One 16, six. one yeah. six. Yeah, one six. And how many internet users? Um, so based on... Uh, roughly. Yeah, roughly is around... Uh, like what, what I see is around like one, one to two million people starting to... Two million? Get, yeah, two million. so people will not know that they're actually using internet but they're using Facebook, so right. which means? Facebook users, how many Facebook users? Let's ask that question. Um, Facebook user, so uh, I checked the statistics in 2015, they got around like, uh, I think 80, uh, no, 800 uh, users. Yeah, 800K, but it's not actually real. But from there to now, I think it'll Maybe be getting quite, wow, I can say like getting to 40, 40 or 50% of the populations because ah, people nice. starting to, like all, also like young teenagers also using uh, Facebook. So just one notice that why uh, Cambodia moving a bit faster, because people, most business focus a lot about mobile, mobile technology. Mm. And the mobile technology with connecting with this uh, 3G, we have 4G. You have 4G? Yeah, we have 4G and uh, very, very, uh, very fast. Uh, very fast. Yeah. And imagine some business say, okay, I'm using a cloud-based technology and how about if the internet connection will, will shut down when they have small company? Then the solution comes in. The internet connection and the electricity will cut off. One thing still solution, you can connect to the, the 4G or 3G, you can, can operate your business. Right. So um, that, that leads me to the next question of what's your favorite startup in your country? For me? Well, yeah, Wukunana. There are quite a few that I like. Pick one. Okay, the one that I like most right now is called Book Delivery. Book Delivery? Yes. Book Delivery is actually, it was born in Startup Weekend, December 2015. Okay. So it was like um, seven months ago, seven, eight months ago. So these guys, um, they have a combination of um, employee, they have, empl um, you know, they have college students. And the idea is about the idea is about ordering books to your house. Uh, it's not like that. The problem in Laos is the problem in Laos is these young people they love to read, uh. but they don't have credit cards, uh. and they have to cross the border to buy books from Thailand. Okay. Um, so to solve this problem, they contact directly with the booksellers okay. in Thailand, like okay. those C8 book, Asia book, right. um, etc., in order to be the sales agent in Laos, yeah. sell the same price, but get the commission. And the other but thing... sell online. Sales online, yes. Nice. The problem in Laos is we got a lot of writers, but these writers have not been promoted. So uh, have you the, talked to people who be? Yeah, uh, but these guys, um, we, they, they are in the process of develop like how to work with Kun Mo. Right. Um, and how to, you because know, like... Because the mission is quite the same, I think. Uh-huh. Yeah. So um, basically, to solve this problem, they set this up. And to help promote the Lao writers, and which wow. it works, each day, one, um, you know, a few Lao writers could sell their books about 100 to 200 books per day which is not bad. And, um, That's very good, actually, yeah. 100 books per day. And you wouldn't believe that this venture 
um, they started their venture by bootstrapping mm. for only 4,000 baht. Ah, okay. And now um, they make um, really good profit. And okay. Are they funded? Uh, right now, they are considering their angels. Wow. Like, um, there are a few angels talking to them, but they are worried. So they would like to study first. Uh, they would like to understand better mm. on how it works before they get investment. Ah, is there any room for me? <laughs> Maybe. I'll, 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 um, I'll link you up because with Because it can, it can become the next Amazon of Laos. Exactly. Because the Amazon also starts from book. Exactly. Right? They, they, are, they want to be the local Amazon, which, you know, they do all these things like book review and all that. And I understand that they don't only stop at books right now. Um, um, they also would like to go beyond the books product to cover educational um, system. Right now, they also become a sole distributor for Lao textbooks under the Lao curriculum. Oh, that's nice. That's like, nice. let's say, if you have a children who will go to grade one, so just buy the whole set from them for that year. Cool. That's yeah. good cash flow. So that's sure. my favorite one right now. Thank you, Kunana. What about you, Zung? What's your favorite one in Vietnam? My favorite one actually is the company I'm in a board member. Ah, okay. And uh, the company has nothing related to tech. It is in agriculture. agriculture. And the name of the company is Hamona. Hamona. Hamona with Mother Nature. Master Nature. Mother Nature, yes. And uh, they do the business is the export processed coconut to the world. Ah. Yeah, right, right now they have the, the they open a company in the US also. And the, the coconut is different from, uh, it is fresh coconut, but it is processed. Then you can drink it very easily. That you just need a stick like this and plug it, and then you can drink it. And uh, the difference of the coconut is normally when you hang the coconut out of the tree, it stops breathing. So that's why when you keep the coconut for a long time, uh, it may harm to your health. But this coconut, uh, we have some kind of technology to cheat it. So after you take out the tree, it keep breathing. So you can keep it longer and within the duration, let's say 30 days, it's safe and it's even sweeter. Nice. So, so that like where, I, where are you export to? How do we get to test those coconuts? Are you exporting to Thailand? Uh, actually, right now we have an excess demand, so we we just focus on US and next market is Japan and Vietnam. Ah, yeah, okay. but actually, uh, right, very interesting question because we are looking for having the coconut farm in Thailand. Okay, he's looking for to, to set up a coconut farm in Thailand. Nice, nice. Thank you. How about you? Zoom, what's your favorite um, startup in Cambodia? Oh, no, Mong Khon, sorry. Um, so, in Cambodia, so there are uh, a number of startups, but one I will uh, bring it up uh, is called Book Me Bus. Book Me Bus? Yeah. That's, is, um, so, I uh, really like the, the concept because Cambodia, the problem that we're spending a lot of hours but find the bus, especially in, uh, let, let's say, in you mean we bus between cities, right? Sorry? Or bus, bus within the city or bus no, between cities? Between city. Mm. Uh, because public bus for us is just the starting point. So we simply booking that is not going to be uh, a call a business, maybe social, social impact, yes. So this across city. And also actually they also book uh, from, uh, from uh, Phnom Penh or some places to Thailand also to Laos as well. Mm. So they're partnering. So this is also great. Um, so the thing is that why this uh, this startup are quite impressed and also I'm, I'm quite support because they actually solving the problem to saving people a lot of time to arrange before, not to just at that time just give it like call number of places right. so we actually can book quickly and also can check by ourselves. How, how's the um, traction so far? Are a lot of people using it? Yeah, yeah, nice. they're getting they're increasing their. Their transaction uh, every yeah every month, 
Okay. And uh, the the another is simply the founder was a very young and passionate person. Is well. it funded? Sorry. Are they funded already? I think so. I think they 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 got uh, they got funded by maybe the sec second round. I'm not so sure, but I many from from inter from like. Local um, and angel, international, I think. Angel yeah. both, I think both, from yeah. what I know is from American Angel. From American Angel, yeah. okay. Who lives in um, Vietnam, I think. Uh, maybe. No, 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 not Steve. Another. But, but in his group, yeah. But uh, it's Angel group. Investment, right? So angel it's seed money. Yes. Yeah. Not not Series A, something like that. So yeah. it's are they still open to to funding? I think I think now they. In case like there are in, like investors in this room. Yeah. So it, it's actually they, they open for investment, but now they get into the diligence the process for, uh, to close that, uh, that deal. So uh, I haven't got the update because it's actually, uh, they also connect to Small World, which is our community as well. That's the cool. thing. So uh, uh, yeah, my, my business partner has. So you're like a mafia in, <laughs> in Cambodia. No. Uh, any, everyone is connected to <laughs> to a small world. Yeah, so. we we not a mafia, but we will be like an uh, angel. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool, <laughs> nice, nice. So I think we only have less than ten minutes left. So my last question would be, um, what can you share? Can you share what is golden in your country? So basically, advertise your country, and also what are some of the unique um, obstacles in your country? that is unique. Like, for example, in Thailand, you know, we have some problems, like maybe sometimes political problems, and sometimes, like, um, we also have Bangkok, which is big, but then other cities are not, like, in the same size as Bangkok. Like, there are some problems that are unique in your country. So can you share the good and bad of your country? Yeah, can you start from Nana? Sure. I think I would like to share the bad points first, the challenges first. The main challenges in Laos is, from what I observe, is number one, is the understanding of startups, of course, the, the startup concept, you know, the mixture of understanding what is what. And number two, I look into the capability and the, you know, caliber of the startups themselves. Um, there are still a lot of questions and there are still things that they need to work on. So it's, it's quite definite. Um, Number three is the access to finance, of course. You know, when you don't have good enough products, then the money will then, you know, um, not be there yet. Um, those are the main problems that we are having now and the awareness of people as well. Um, even though the startups, they have the fire to, you know, start their own um, business, um, Many times, I think it's not enough. Um, I would use this word. They need to be more hungry. The hunger of um, doing startup should be more. Okay. That's something we need to work on. Um, the good thing of Laos is because it's, you know, it's still at early stage. I still have this belief that in this country, if you, if you see, you know, some common problems inside the country first and you create a solution through a business, um, you will achieve quite substantial, you know, um, result, quite significant result if you are not lazy, if you are, you know, put your effort so into are, it. There are opportunities, it's still yes. open. Yes, yes, right. that's right. Um, also, the challenge, and you have to work on the opportunity, is that if you only focus on domestic market, which is too small, like um, the users of the internet it allows is only, you know, people who have access to internet, it's like 3 million people, but only 800,000, which is like surprisingly the same number as Cambodia, are using Facebook. Right. So these people are those who are go we are going to work on to be the potential users or customers. The market size can market be Market size too. is still a challenge if you just look into investing in this country only, but opportunities definitely there. Right. So the, I think the point is 
how you are going to just go beyond the Lao market. I agree, I agree. Zoom, what's Gordon in your country and what are some of the challenges? So looking at it from the viewpoint of an ecosystem accelerator, the Vietnamese ecosystem, we have startup that have startup, startup. So all people are learning something, so we are open for collaboration, very receptive, so that is very good point. But on the other hand, since we are, I think, facing the challenges of over-excitement. Over-excitement. Yeah. Mm. Over. So sometimes we, you can meet a lot of people, like, I mean, the young founder, who can talk about very, very big things. But then you need to nail him down to the earth and then ask them to start with very small things, concrete things. Because doing is totally different from saying. And okay, I think distracted from you. <laughs> okay, that's good. So the the opportunities are that collaborative culture, like people helping each other. But the challenges can be that it's all hyped a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit like Thailand, really. Anyway, so what about, what about Cambodia? What's Gordon? Um, so, I'm talking maybe a good thing first, yeah. <laughs> and back to the bad thing. <laughs> okay, so um, the great thing is in Cambodia, we, we are, um, first thing I will bring the word globalization, because we, uh, we are open, most of uh, Cambodian people are starting to at least know in two languages, Khmer and also uh, English, that in open, opening for us to communicate internationally. And uh, the second is that uh, we, with, with that globalization, we are exploring uh, like outside opportunity that can be used in our country and also looking for export outside. Um, so for the last one is the internet penetrations. <laughs> because of the in we, we have very cheap uh, internet I mean, uh, service, especially for 3G, we pay five, $5, we can get like 3.5 gigabyte or more. $5, wow. Yeah, you see, it's wow. very cheap. Yeah. And, and, and also, in the next one is simply, if my credit doesn't have money, I can still using social media for, 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 for free. Yeah, for free. Yeah. And this is an opening for people to access the information and uh, people can do a lot of things with the, uh, the internet. And for other is that people start to accept the new technology. Uh, like new business, so they're thinking about if I run a business, I might thinking about starting a website, but not enough. They go straight to the mobile, which right. is like the opening for the very advanced for yeah. the, it's equal for the, the global market for you know technology like this. So uh, this is a, like a great opportunity open for us already, and we soon uh, online payment will be established. That nice. will be a really. And great. what are some of the challenges? So the challenge is, is human resource. That's, mm. I think, for everywhere. But with the, history, uh, with, with the history, as you know, that for us to find uh, you know, talent and also knowledgeable person, people are quite challenging. So that's many companies are, I, I feel uh, really uh, happy also that many company now, they focus on, you know, not like also like uh, have a lot of training for the staff and also looking for uh, like a little bit uh, corporate social responsibility for for corporate and also for startup focus about training people developing people and many many workshop and training that is a really good sign and the the another one is simply uh, again access to finance we have something similar as well and also looking for market agriculture I think you may know is that we have products but we cannot control the market we hardly to uh, stabilizing the produce, producer, the, 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 the seller and the buyer cannot be sustained. For example, we have products, we cannot uh, sustain our market, mm -hmm. but sometimes we're exporting outside. And then, uh, so this information is not so uh, quality that to make sh the, the farmer make the right decision that what kind of products, that, that what kind of, uh, like what kind of uh, product that they should produce and what is the quality, a uh, quantity. And I think uh, uh, infrastructure is starting to getting better, but I think comparing to uh, Vietnam, uh, uh, Thai, and also Laos, we're getting 
bit by bit to that level. Nice, nice. So thank you. To wrap up, it seems like there are a lot of opportunities in Laos, Cambodia, and so Vietnam. There are more good things than bad things for sure listening to you guys. So thank you so much for the time today. I think our time is up. And yeah, thank you. Thank you, Yad. Right. Thank you, Yacht. Thank you. Thank you, Zoom. Thank you. Thank you.